There we okay. Go. Can you see that now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm not sure if I can drag you to a second screen. <laughs> Doesn't sound too healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can only view one screen at a time. Um, yeah, a so. Stuart, are you seeing Joe's uh, model? Yeah, I just clicked uh, Joe's face and the well, his screen on the bottom right. Right. Okay. So it's all good. I can hear my little lad feed his headphones going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Good, then, eh? we yeah, let's put that up on the big TV. There we go. Can you hear my little lad? I can hear him. Can you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to go to bed early, but oh well. Right. So, do you want me to go through our job I'm making that then? Yeah. Okay, no problem. So, Matrix. Well, I'll try and do it um, in um, a way that's, you know, but we're the same in Rhino, really. I don't use any of the builders apart from when it comes to laying the gems out because it's, it's dead easy. Um, so, it says, and the first thing I'm going to do is make a ring size. <laughs> but, <anyway. laughs> um, so, standard ring size British gem and a half, I don't know, it is in American. Uh, seven, does that sound right? Seven is standard. Okay. Yep. Okay. Isn't it all to put different size stones in it? Basically, it's a ten minute job, easy job. Um, you can't get massive sizes of changes out of it because it starts to distort. It. Basically, the shanks made in teeth lines and the, the halos in history. Unfortunately, it doesn't update the stones, but it just gives you a little bit of a, a head start. Uh, so, what have we got here? Quad snaps on. Um, go for about 1.8, something like that, with a shank. Um, move that over to the other side. Um, and then just get a curve um, from the end of that to that. We've got some mad colours going on here. And then um, put a stone out. Um, so that's in the hoops. There we go. Um, so about a one carat, something like that, which is a standard money maker. <laughs> um, I just eyeball that height there, and um, like I say, you can adjust it all later, so it's not mega important. Um, and these are just set outlines anyway. Um, so I'll just put a little tag there, um, and also probably bring that in there just as a, a little guide and change the colour of it and then just a blend um, from that one to that one which is lovely <laughs> points on with F10 and then just pull this whoops I don't mind about that I left that one to show later on um, something like that um, And then, uh, oops, well then, just join them up. Um, get rid of that. And then I just offset that about 1.6, but I just do it a through point, just oh, put it about there, and then offset that 1 milli ish. Uh, and then just pick them up and then get rid of them and then join them together. Oops, it says it can't join them, so it might be because it needs not flat. So just um, project a seaplane. Uh, like you say, they're only sat like these anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and I've already messed that up. 
good to make it a halo, aren't we? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> 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 so I thought I'd start by showing you how to make a solid. <laughs> Uh, right, so, um, so that was a solitaire basically, now a halo, that's different, <laughs> I'll put another tag here, uh, and then go about 1.6, something like that, and, uh, and then do our little line up again, the same process basically. Uh, <laughs> so blend. Oops, that curved, that curved. Oh, it's all going wrong now, and see a lot. It's because you're trying to do speed cut. <laughs> yeah, that's it, isn't it? Uh, from there to there. So, do you always use um, edit points instead of blend curve with two points, or? Ah, uh, yeah. I just think it's from well, from doing it in dual cut. I think that basically, I always use. Um, I, I always just use the points to modify everything. Um, you can get nice blends and stuff, but I just don't know. That's just how I like to do it, I suppose. I love it. It's the wrong. Um, it did, yeah. yeah. It's, um, okay, so now we've got that there. Um, we need to offset that again with a through point. Um, something like that. Uh, and then offset that. Um, that one really. Um, get them, and then just use the trim tool to not take that one away. Take that one and that one away. That could go actually. Control Z is actually my favourite command. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the easy bit, so it's just not going to go well, is it, this? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same as me. Gaming mouse with 12 keys assigned to jewelry cat. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, um, that one's projecting again, because it's jumped out, so... And then join it all. <laughs> anyway, you, your voice is pretty quiet. Can I just hear you? Yeah. I like it when I can hear you breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, how about that? Yeah, that's a bit better. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Right, so I've just locked them basically now because um, saves so messing about. And what we're going to do now is make um, a single flat T spline surface. Um, actually, I won't lock it because I will for now. I'll have to um, go into it later. So, um, select T spines. Um, and then I want to use a pen. Um, just basically, you can um, drag this out with all. Um, so oh, you'd select that curve. Um, oops. Select that curve, and then um, with Alt Press you can drag it out and do this. But I find after a bit that this starts going straight, so you end up um, going back and using having to swap hotkeys. But I use the hotkeys turned off because if you forget to turn it, um, T spines off, you it's does all sorts of funny things through the command line. So Yeah, I hate Yeah, I so hate that's what I'm talking. That's how I basically do it. Um, so um, if you can get a snap there that's better. Um, and then just make these so it looks right really. Hey can go. Hmm? Go up to your mode. Yeah. 
up to the command line. Uh, yeah. Start it again. Put it in. Uh, right click. Right click. Start it again. Yeah. And then go to mode. Click on mode. Mode. And then say from edge. And then when you click on your, click on the uh, topmost edge. Yeah. No, no, no. On, yeah, on the. And then oh, just get your points. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then, you don't have to restart the command in between. Oh no, no it's all going wrong. You know what I'm going to do if I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so simple for a reason. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I watched a video before, and they tried to do it from pivot tools. And when I tried to do it, it just did not go right whatsoever no, no. from the center. I don't know. Yeah, I'd, my approach to teach find is sort of made up a little bit. I'm not an expert at it, but because um, so we've got a split here now, I make this shorter, and then um, add a simple point, um, basically just there. And what's that's done if I turn the points on? It's added that there. Um, and that's why it's called T-splines, because you can start the spline from anywhere you want. So I can split this up into two now. Uh, so I've got a mid-snap on there. Uh, oh, that's quite some wrong command. So go back into the pen. Um, I'll have a play with that mode one. It looks good, that. that uh, let's see where we can get. Uh, and then this one is. Bit boring, this bit. Okay. Um, so, what we've done now is created this sort of set up and um, what you need to do is extrude this. Now again I do this a bit of a funny way I think but it's just what it's for so um, so I select the lines um, and then double click on the edge. Oops it's not working either. Mm -hmm. You gotta lock your curves. Yeah I thought I'd locked them. They're locked anyway, the things. So I've selected the lines there basically. Um, and I want to extrude it. Um, do I? Extrude the edge. Um, and then I'm just going to eyeball it to 2.1 or half a 2.1, so it's just over there. But what it does, it brings it out backwards. <laughs> Like you say, it's not a problem because I find it just that's how I do it. I don't know. Um, so I'll turn that stone off and then I select points, select that. I mean, anyone that knows that the doom is probably laughing the red off at me, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care. And then select uh, points now. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get it done. Yeah, that's it. Isn't it? Um, so now. Um, I'll manage to move it down a little bit, but again, it doesn't matter. Just pull it up to there. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is put symmetry into this. Um, so, it, yeah, once I move it, it all moves. Um, so, that's given us sort of a basic shank now. It's very rounded, especially for putting stones in, so you can use um, weight command, but you only have to do it to a quarter of it, and because it's got a symmetry, it sort of updates everything, which is good. Um, so, select that, um, select that, oh, not that. Come on. Uh, and that. Um, and then what I'll do is just, I'll just get rid of all that side there. And then in here, oh, actually, I think there's a bomb for it. I think it's that one. Oh, that's that point. That's not good. <laughs> so, TST splines weight. 
and uh, it's set at one now, which is the most curvaceous. If you set to nine, it's like pretty much like a 90 degree turn, so I sort of maybe go for six, something like that. Um, go back into that. Uh, so it's, can you see, it's put that edge on in there, which is nice. This looks horrible now. Um, so but the beauty of it is you can just click in, uh, pull this so it's nice. Uh, that's not um, that's not fingered, I don't think. Uh, so, see, that's why that's why it looks funny. There is um, six. There we go. That's better. That's an ugly ring as well. I'm good at ugly rings. I'm the expert at them. <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter because. But the beauty of it is now is that this. Um, you can size really easy for, for different size stones and stuff um, just by pulling it across and it all updates um, uh, it's probably not the best example of it but it does it works really well I will just pull it up a little bit around and then if you want to put um, a bit of thickness in the bottom you just need to pull pull it out um, that looks awful. <laughs> Why did you add the uh, thickness in the bottom? I don't know, just to make it a little bit different. Just saying what you could do, you don't need to. There's no reason really. Just because just okay. you can, it's dead easy. You know, you're not re sweeping and sweeping stuff. Um, I just didn't know if it was a, a British thing. No, I don't think so. Um, this is funny, actually. Let me just go back out of this and see why that's gone. Gone funny. Yeah. No, I don't think it's a British thing. I think it's just because it looks nice. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have those uh, Euro shanks. Yeah, well, our stuff's a lot thinner in it, I think, as well. A bit more... Dainty, yeah, sort of, uh, more refined and lighter. Yeah, well, they want to make everything as light as possible, which annoys you. Mm. <laughs> Made you a ring for three grams. No, I want it one point five. <laughs> yeah, that looks better now. Yeah, there we go. I mustn't have selected um, um, one of the light, one of the curves. Must have dropped out. That's why that one was bad. But um, so we bring our stone back there. Um, and let me just say this. Uh, I think we have a lot of people watching on YouTube. Uh, okay. If you want to come into the room where you can talk and ask questions, uh, just message me on uh, Google Hangouts, uh, emarvets at Gmail, and I'll add you to the room if you're having trouble getting in. No, we don't. Is that our? Uh, um, so, make the halo now. Um, again, go for about one point six, and then this will be minus one point six. Um, that puts us there. Uh, and then just turn that off. Well, I'll leave it on for now. So, so when I'm doing halo. Um, let me lock my stone if I can. No. Which one is it? I've got it. When I'm doing a halo, um, I like to put like a, a little bit of a, a bezel underneath it so when you look down the side of the stone, you know, it doesn't look like there's a gap there. Um, so. Get that to something like that, and then just tab that. Uh, it's not going to work that anyway. But something like that. Um, basically, I just make it up so it looks something like, and then put the stones on a bit of an angle like that. Uh, and then if we um, into intersection. Uh, 
So we'll go for the intersection set there and give that a little bit of a, a little bit of an edge, just so it looks nice. And then just chop away the, the bits we don't need. Um, Uh, a prong, so basically, maybe. we've got two spines on now, we don't need to have that one. Um, something like that. Um, prong, middle of the prong goes to the end of the stone ish. Uh, and then if we get those two and group them, I'll do that in a minute actually. So I want put them together to join them. So it's unable to. So again, it just wants projecting um, to the C plane. And then it'll join one close curve. And then with that, just do revolve uh, here somewhere in it. Surface revolve from F4 straight up. Um, but when I've done it, I've got uh, Rhino history on, which is important. Um, select them now, put them on the red layer. If um, let's bring, bring that back. Okay, so like this is too big now um, because we've done it in T spines. It's not a problem. Um, just got to select edges and select that. Oops, Oops wrong button. There we go. So I can just pull that in now. And then I'm going to pipe that. I always make these, I've done that point nine just as a, I always make them. Uh, I've so that one's bringing up now. Uh, I always make everything so it's on the on the C plane in the front view, uh, and like the head, I'll just turn it around forty five degrees, just because, like I say, if 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 the main thing about this is if you just decide to go for a different size stone, so maybe go for I don't know three quarters of a carrot because the poor. Uh, so, so that one in it. So pull that up to the that one. Obviously, this is all too small, but because it's history enabled now, uh, I can just select that, push that in, and all updates, and then I can do the same with me with me. Um, T spine, so it's not the end of the world. It's a bit ugly there, I want to be messing with, but you can play around with it so you can get it nice again. That one's coming out there. It's a bit weird looking, but you know what I mean. This is pushing it to show you, try, try to look good. <laughs> um, but essentially, that's it's quite good for quick changes. Um, so I'm going to top there. Transform array, array polar, uh, F4. Oops. Oh, transform array polar, F4, number of items, 4. That was our head. Have we done 10 minutes yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, once you're happy with that, just turn it round. Uh, backwards face right in. Um, yeah, so the history's gone in that now. That's the only thing, but you get the idea. Uh, and then the stones, it's that simple with the matrix. It's one of the things it's good at. Um, uh, Gem on curve. Um, before I do that, curve. Um, 
different colors we can see it. Um, it's probably best. You can put um, stone on tea spines, but we're calling that sort of done now. Um, so if we put a, a cut across the top of this, um, select all that, and then display it with that. I'll turn it into a Thanks, hungry. Cross <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cookies. I can't help it. Is that something? <laughs> cookies. I would eat so much cookies right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Um, if you're doing this one. It curves off the side of this um, because we've cut that now we can cap that uh, and then we can again take the curves off this um, so like surface restriction so that one but what I need to do is toggle that there you go it's all going wrong no, I said that uh, matrix is really good for. <laughs> uh, so it's toggled now. We get that on the mid, uh, and then just repeat it and toggle it again for that. Find the end of that one. But what I do find with this is um, the lines are very heavy. Um, it's in millions of points on them, so if you have to turn that. And you tend to get uneven spacing, that one's not too bad actually, but if you use offset or anything like that, so um, just rebuild them. Um, 11, that'll probably do it, 9, something like that. Don't you matter. Ever use a uh, rebuild curve non uniform? Probably could, yeah, but to be honest, for putting into this, I find that's, you know. Uh, you know, it's just what I do. I've never tried the other ones, but it's like a bit trying. What's the difference so. between the two? Um, it'll what take the guesswork out of on? how many points to, to put in. You say keep it within a tolerance of 0 0.01, and uh, it'll build a degree three curve with however many points you need to get that shape. Um, if you did it by hand, you could get it closer to fewer points. You know, but it, it makes it makes quick work out of it. So, oh, there we no. go. Um, that's finished dish. Is that ten minutes? Eh? Yes, ten minutes. <laughs> I I got it over here, and um, I'm going to. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to switch over to my screen and throw on Rhino. All right. Can everybody see it? Yep. Okay, so this is uh, Joseph's model, and I'm going to take and get it ready for 3D printing with uh, 3D coat. And Joseph made this for uh, a peg head construction, but I'm just going to hide the peg and uh, print it as one. So I'm going to grab all of this and export it out um, to the desktop. And I'm going to export it as an object file. And when I do this, you guys can't see any of those option screens, can you? Can you see the option screens? No. No? Okay. Um, I can see. No, you can't. 
Uh, each of these are on different layers. So I can, when I export it as an object, I said group by layer. And I'll put a link to the tutorial I did on getting it out of uh, Rhino and into 3D Coat. But it's an object file. And then I can switch over to 3D Coat. You disappeared there, Eric. Yep. There you go. There's a setting in there on 3D Coat because this I couldn't get my head around this when I was doing it first. Um, that you have to have it in, when you're in, importing. Is it importing layers or import not together or something? Well, you can do it one of two ways. You can group everything in Rhino and export your Rhino groups as object groups, or you can put it on different layers in Rhino and right. export your Rhino layers as groups. Uh, you, you can choose either one. I use layers for it. Um, are you guys seeing uh, 3D code? No, I'm not. Just a black screen. Just a black screen? Well, okay. I can see your mouse. All right, hold on. Okay, can you see it now? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me uh, start over. New voxel mesh for sculpting, and I'm going to import mesh for voxelization and go back to my desktop here. And grab that object. Okay, when it comes in, um, sometimes it'll remember your previous poly count. <laughs> but because I just canceled it, it's going to not remember what I did last time. And 2000 is a good... Um, 2000 is a good scale up value. That gives me just under a million, million polys which for this model is pretty straightforward, but some of the larger models I do, it'll be 14 million polys. Click Apply, and uh, just switch over to your fill brush. So now I have two layers that match what my uh, Rhino layers were. Um, I got the head on one and the metal on the other. For this, I'm just going to go ahead and Boolean them all together merge with metal, and now I've got one object. Usually I have half a dozen layers in here, because uh, I do all of my booleans in 3D Coat, not just... Um, I, I don't do any booleans in Rhino anymore. It, it just It's so much faster in here. Yeah, like uh, I do so, all mine in Magic X. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I'll normally do is uh, just do a smooth all on the whole thing. And I like this red material because it shows where you've got um, flat will be pretty much red. And where you have any changes in curvature, you'll have a white-red mix. And it makes it easier to see seams and what is flat versus what is not. So here's Joseph's uh, peg head where... I um, let me get my screen down here in my lap. Um, so I start with the fill brush because if I hold down shift, it'll switch over to smooth. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and just fill that right on in. That's good. And then the, the thing with a flat head like this, when you go to print it, that's a lot of flat real estate between those two... Um, prongs. And if you just printed it like this, which is what's going on on the uh, printer behind me, um, you'll need some supports in here. Otherwise, you'll get sagging. It'll be, it'll lay down just a little bit. Um, and Joseph used T-spline, so this is a soft, um, this is a soft curve right here. But if you were just to have cut it out, it would be a sharp edge that would be perfect for breaking um, the investment. So I'm going to toggle my symmetry here on the X and Y. And if this wasn't a T-splines model, I would come in here and just give it a little bit of weight and then smooth it. 
And then that way, when it prints, that's not going to be a, a sharp edge that would attack the investment. I'll also come in here, and this joint, I want metal to flow nice, so I will smooth that down, fill this in, smooth that. Let me give my smoothing a little more power here. Okay, and from the side, it, it's you're not going to notice anything, but that little fillet is just going to help with metal flow. And I'll also uh, bring my power down and just barely kiss this and smooth all that in. And when you look at it, you're still going to have that joint there, but it's not going to be a sharp joint. Um, okay, now for over here. So I really like Joseph's placement on a halo. When the setter goes to push down on this outside lip, that, that's going to give him a nice um, nice structure for pushing on. But where it meets the flat, I'm going to get a bigger brush, and I'm just going to bring this out. And I'm going to try and work towards the back. So from the front, it looks like a flat edge, but on the inside, uh, it's going to taper quite a bit. Bring that out, and then I'll uh, smooth that all down. And so now when I look at this, you know, just imagining all the Z slices, you know, it, it's not going to go straight from this to a flat edge. It's going to slowly go out, a little bit more material to the B9 software. And what I did earlier was... Switch to the right view with no perspective on. And so this is the, the halo as Joseph made it. And there you can, there's the flat. Um, how you would normally try and support that is over here. And I'll jump into this one's supports. Go to the bottom. And um, so this is each slice. It's it's a rough representation. Um, it, it doesn't know exactly where it's going to slice yet, but as I bring the mouse down, I can see what that layer slice will look like. And as I get right here, it immediately starts jumping out. That will print fine, but when we get just a little farther out, you see that big jump? That big jump, um, it's going to be sagging here in the middle. So uh, that's where those supports are lined up as it gets a little bit too far, and then all the way out here to the edge. And, and that's why those supports were placed there. And the um, x-ray vision is good for looking at this as well. I'll, I always run, before I print, I always run through with x-ray vision and just slowly go through looking to see what that slice is going to look like. And right there is the changeover. And you can see inside of your supports. And then after you get into that slice, you can see how much of your support tip is intersecting the model. And then now we're to the pilot holes on top. And then we got the prongs going all the way out. So I will get my um, get right about to here. And then I'll go into modify. And I'll fine tune my. Um, my supports and grab it. Nope. I go out a little bit. Yeah, it's gotta be green, that's right. Okay. I can grab it and move it you know, right there, that would be a good place. But I got also gotta think how big my tip is on uh, my support. But I know right there will be a good one, and for this one, or maybe in the middle of that right there. But I'll fine tune my supports looking at it from the bottom with perspective off using x ray vision, and then I can go forward and back and uh, get a feel for it. So turn that off. And then if we go look at the other one, 
So this is the version from 3D Coat. Go into supports for it and uh, show you guys what that looks like. <clears throat> Let me switch my camera around here. Okay. I'm got a tripod. If you click on that, Eric, or are you going to make that the main one? Uh, did I not make it the main one? No, well, I'm sure. You've got, uh, you've got yeah. uh, I gave you access to the control panel, so you can um, right. yeah, okay. make me the main one. Yeah, yeah they are, it's you now. <laughs> I think. Can everyone see okay. that? Yeah. Uh, we might have lost Stuart for a minute. No, no, I'm just I, I'm just trying to get through my head that there's a projector underneath there. <laughs> yep. Um, have, so, you ever, have you ever tried to print a film? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, what's going on here? Oh, resin uh, film, that's the future. <laughs> so I'll uh, disconnect this and show you guys uh, workspace. Jeez. He's got a workout bike in there as well. <laughs> I'm a bit optimistic, that yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> All right, so uh, over here is my ultrasonic with a missing tank lid. And this is a container of ISO alcohol and two little slats I use to, to block it up. So I found this container. It just perfectly fits inside of the uh, ultrasonic. And with two hands, I can do this better. But oh, damn it. OK, well, it's supported on one side. OK, I'll go ahead and turn this on and get it heating up. So that's my ultrasonic tank. Um, I've got a lot of what, cookie sheets. What's, Eric, what, with, what's the ultrasonic yeah. for? For the resin? Uh, for cleaning for cleaning this resin print. Right, OK. So I'll put this back on the tripod. Um, here I have my stand for um, Joseph, I forgot the English language. Um, for coffee I, for filter. I need to coffee filter, filter, brain filter. Uh, paint strainer. Yeah, paint stress, so face I, strainer. I took a funnel and just sliced the bottom off of it. So it, the, the paper strainers, they want to take an oval shape and move from side to side. And I'll miss the, the point, the... the <laughs> I really did forget the fucking English language. <laughs> um, it's all in it'll miss the top of the bottle, <laughs> and it'll go down the side. So I use a little uh, paint strainer and a little funnel that's been cut off to keep it weighted in center. So then as I go to fill my bottle here, it stays in position as I pour. And that's for so filtering that's that. resin. I got a little fan. It's for filtering yeah, resin. Yeah. So now. if I had a, I, if I had a failed print, um, then because the B9 sweeper takes everything that fails off the PDMS, it'll be deposited over here in this side. So if any time I notice I have a failed print, which is not that often, um, I'll strain. Uh, if I'm changing between resins, I'll give it a strain. Otherwise, the with the old cherry, I used to strain it after every job because I did not let the, the cherry sit in here. All the pigment settled to the bottom. And you cannot stir it in a shallow container like this and get all the pigment back into the mixed in properly. Um, you really need to take it off. And, and uh, I actually have a mag stir that I'll, I will stir it on. Um, but the first thing I do is... Take this, and most people just hang it right here, but I replace it 
of the B9 screws for the table with uh, thumb screws. Let me get my other build table. So these are thumb screws. I had a tough of getting an Allen wrench in there um, to tighten up the table because you have to get this um, flat with the PDMS. So what I would do is just put thumb screws in here, and that way I'd get it level, and then you know do uh, each side tightening it up slowly, and then finally I, I'd get it to where it'd be tight and I'm flat and nothing curled up on me. Because if you over tighten one of these, it will actually make this edge uh, jump up. So I, I don't put any weight on this. I just slowly go back and forth side to side with my fingers. Um, I take it back. I do put a weight on it. It's not a lot of weight, and I don't push down on it because. But I got a little uh, machinist three to one block. <clears throat> I'll just set it in there like that. Um, but I'm I'm using as little uh, of my muscle strength as I can because it, I, I want it to be just resting flat and I'm just kind of slowly, like I'm sneaking up on it, tightening it down. I'm not cranking and um, making anything warp or tilt. So over here, that's drip drying right now. It's just a paper clip that I, I got to hang it there and let it drip dry. Over here, I have a DOA vat. Uh, here's my lens cap, and somebody made this and put it on the B9 form. It, it's it's kind of hilarious, but it helps you not forget that you have the lens cap on because there's this big ridiculous sign hanging in front of the printer uh, that says you have your, your lens cap on. <laughs> um, this is a dead vat. It, it leaks. Um, get all the straight papers out of here. But... With the new polyvats and the self-leveling PDMS, I can calibrate any build table to this, and it will be calibrated for all the other vats as well. So I keep this here. What I did is I took a hot glue gun and filled in this, so I made sure this is sitting, um, this is sitting in contact. It, it it started leaking resin right here after six months. Um, but if I need to check the uh, calibration of the projector, if I need to check, check the calibration of the build table, I'll just take this vat full of resin and set it out on the counter, swap in this, this old dead vat. And, a bit um, of dust on the exercise bike, Gary. What's that? It says looks quite a yeah. lot of dust on the exercise bike. <laughs> yeah. It's not an exercise bike, Joseph. It's a coat rack. See? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. It's not quite done, but I don't want to bore you guys with uh, watching an ultrasonic go. So when it gets done, I'll just cut that off, take my alcohol, out, and we have another ultrasonic in the workshop, but I always keep a spare of we use every day, all day. So this is our spare ultrasonic tank, and I use it for this because I'm not putting a lot of miles on it, um, cleaning off prints every two or three days. But we only have one lid, so saran wrap. <laughs> Okay, so now that I got that off, um, I've got a paint scraper, and I'll just take, uh, I'll just take and lift up on the corners. Don't put your angle too high because you'll dig into this soft aluminum, and I'll show you all the scratches I've done. Is um, that the same as aluminum? Yes. Same, yeah. Just it, check it. It, it's a little bit better, but... <laughs> uh, 
And this big ring's stuck on. Oh, there it all went. Okay, so here's the um, the three halos. And let me dry it off with a little compressed air here. Okay. Oh, uh, not going to focus. Come on. That's nah, not going to focus on it. But uh, I'll take some high res photos and show them to you guys. But the one that I did the 3D coat with. Usually, if you just tap on it, it'll uh, automatically focus. But nope. I'll, I'll take a high res photo of this uh, little brick here. But if you look at the one that I took in a 3D coat, it looks perfect. The one as Joseph did it, you can see there's the lamination on that head. And then the one with supports came out perfect, but nobody wants to clean those supports off of uh, the bottom side of that head. So. Um, yeah, That's I cool. cut the ring in half, so <laughs> I was trying to get it done, and uh, for you guys to see this afternoon, a ring that was a rush job that needed to be done. So, and it, it's it's wrong. Oh damn it, it's wrong. All right, so here's a monster signet ring rush job that I was going to cast tonight in the trash. There you go. And I get to stay late. What was wrong with it? Um, my cutout is not centered because um, I laid it down on its side to get ready to print. And because I didn't let it finish uh, in tonic, I did bring resin on me. Um, <clears throat> when I laid it down, I uh, made a second rotation. And I didn't grab all the parts when I made the second rotation. Uh, okay. So some of those uh, details on the side are at one angle, and the rest are at another angle. And damn it, I can't believe I did that. Because I got a whole solid skate plate ready to go uh, for tonight in the oven too. But I guess that's on hold now. <clears throat> but yeah, that's my little. Uh, Workspace, some other things I have that I like to keep on hand, uh, UV glasses so I can look cool while I'm uh, playing with the printer. <laughs> and then uh, Mike Redburn was asking about what I do to get the B9 dialed in. You can get it dialed in just these little calibration plates are great. But if you really want to make sure that you are dead on, uh, a little USB dyno light, just put it on there, and you can go over from corner to corner and make sure that um, all of the lines are dead centered. And then you will, that's how I do it. I, I use this little dyno light uh, to double check that a pen face. Oh, sorry. I wanted to show you uh, a pen face real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in my... Uh, I'm going to switch to just showing Rhino so you guys can see it a little clearer. Um, let's see. Just Rhino so it will be bigger. There. Is that bigger? Yeah. So I have a bunch of uh, scripts, like uh, for finger rail, I just say size 7, and um, this is all locked, it's just guide rails, and then this is the curve that I, I use to um, block everything out, but I'll come into the front, uh, copy, 
And so I would take and turn the points on for this and just say 90 degree turn. Oops. Negative 90. Huh. Well. Oh, um, I know what's happening. I gotta reboot. Um, my number pad is not working, so I was typing, but nothing actually went in. So I would just do like that, and then um, I have this guide rail that's locked, so I can kind of see what a perfect arc would look like. And then I'll just bring that out to there, and then uh, do my cutout later. But just make sure I'm following this arc. And then that would be my outer curve. Oh, that's not very even. But um, I can't see that, Eric. Is it, is it me or is it? You can't see it? No. Yep, that's I can weird. See the, I, can, um, no, I, can, I can see the rhino, but I can't see what you're doing. Maybe it's the color. I oh, know I can. You, what I'm, if I share the whole screen, when you couldn't see 3D coat earlier, I was yeah. sharing the whole screen. Or I'm uh, sharing just 3D code. No, I can so I can see where you've done it now. I couldn't see it before. Yeah, I can see. So yeah, it didn't show anything. Before. Yeah. Well, I, I made Rhino smaller so it would appear larger on your screen and you could read stuff. Yeah. But uh, I guess Google Hangout does not like uh, to do that. So one more time, um, go to Simple to start off and. Uh, Grab your first four. And you don't have to cancel it in between these. Um, yeah. I'm just going to say from edge, pick that edge. Right. No, that's good. I like that. Yeah. And then they have another one called uh, chain, but there's a, I, I think it's just a bug um, because it does not work like uh, I think it should. Uh, it change it off of the first face that you started from. Right. Uh, and I would split it there, but um, yeah. just from edge, it'll make uh, laying this out a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, TS edit mode. Turn on my points. And it looks like all these guys need to be scaled out just a little bit. Um, Turn copy off. Just bring those out to match up with my reference curve. Anyways, um, but yeah, append is good for that. And I think there was one other command I wanted to show you. Um, oh, uh, when you go to do your um, let me go to when you go to make your uh, mirror. So say you want it, you're using 1.8 stones, and you want your yeah to type it in on there. Yeah, has to be uh, yeah. 2.15. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my number pad is dead. Yeah, divide. You put the, put the slash in divide. Yeah. I pop it out to there, and then yeah. what I would do is um. Uh, go over here and do symmetry on, add axial, go like that, and do it again, add axial, go like that. Um, I'd grab these guys and then uh, get rid of everything else, and then go to my edge mode, grab that one, grab that one. Um, Actually, all I need to do... Just the outsides, yeah. Yeah, and then... Um, and then segments two, so I have the seam in the center. And then now I've got... Um, did that just kill symmetry? Nope, symmetry's still on. Both ways. Uh, so I'll... So you know, you I might have to three or four TS pipes together, though. What for? Oh, sorry. Well, if you're doing a sweep ring, 
with test yeah. blinds and use test pipes. If you draw from halfway around the ring, so halfway around the shank, and then go up yeah. to the curves. Yeah. Is there a quick way to join all four together, or three together, or do you have to delete the faces individually and then lose um, TS merge? I always delete the inner faces and do it like you say with a with a set point, and then you can just delete everything and add what just do one and add symmetry if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, grab your edges on the end. And actually, I, I like working in the points. But um, I use a uh, set point. And if I'm going to try and mirror them, I go off the X. Uh, just say X, zero. Oh. Not like X. And say zero. And then that way, I know these are on that boundary. And the same thing if I was trying to do it this way. Because uh, I just can't. Just take these and do a set point on the Z, the zero. And so now I know these are flat, flat on. I want to do symmetry. So I can say symmetry on this, um, add uh, axial. And then from the front view, I, I have these, and I'm I'm sure they're on zero because this is my template file, and I, I make sure this starts on zero because a lot of things run off of this curve, like for example my uh, trademark and carrot stamp. So whenever the um, uh, scale. So whenever my ring size changes, um, if I said uh, finger rail of 10, you know, it, it's going to lay out that arc to give me a, a guide. It, it's going to update all the little things like this that are in my template file to match. Um, and, and that's just basically a, if I look on a hidden layer, it's just float out there. It's nothing special. But it saves a lot of time, you know, that all the little five minute things you have to do at the end of a model, like uh, throw a sprue on it. Um, you know, my sprues are in there. Uh, what else? Do you set them on a the layer, Eric? What's that? Do you set them on a the layer so you can just bring them in? Oh yeah, um, I have everything laid out in here. Temp is where I do a lot of uh, construction curves at the beginning, so it's already expanded in the template because I'm going to be using these as I go through. And uh, when I get towards the end, they get turned off. Um, for all my flows, I've got my flow targets, my flow objects, and any cage editing. Um, that's my layout. The gems, these are all my gems. Um, but I've got a brilliant channel set, I've got a brilliant prong set, and I've got a brilliant thread set. So I can bring these in. And if you were to dissect this, uh, you have the gem, you have the rail, you have meta, um, which I think it's hidden on the meta layer, so I don't ever actually see it. But uh, where is it? Oh. Uh, sometimes the space mouse, when you go into something like this, it'll uh, start going crazy. Where it is? If you've not seen it for a while, why don't you try looking on the exercise bike? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> uh, I may not have. I'm, I, I'm. No, I had to have. 
So obviously, Rhino didn't have all your gems pre-made, so you had to make them all yourself. Right, because I just use Rhino. Um, oh, that gem rail comes in handy. Uh, these are, are profile cutters. So when I'm doing a thread cut stone, uh, sorry, a uh, bead set stone, this is going to cut my center channel. This is going to cut the outside uh, to give me a channel going down the side of the stone. Yeah. And if I turn on my cutters layer, you know, this is going to cut from the side of the shank to the side of the shank, and that's going to give me my pilot hole down to the bottom. So all of these are in uh, this block definition, which cancel that. Um, so that's a block. And, oh, I know why uh, that metal meta is empty right now. Um, if I line the object, so let's say I get this way out here in space and it's all twisted around. Uh, you know, normally your gumball will look like this. It, it's aligned to the C plane, but that really doesn't help me rotate this stone on, on a, you know, it, its major axis here. So... While it's a block, I can say align the object, and it will go dead center, depending on what block it is. Um, for channel set and thread set, which is bead set, we call it thread set, uh, it's the top of the table. It's the dead center top of the table. But for um, something with prongs, it will be the uh, center of the girdle. So wherever I want that to be. But when I, I have another command, explode block, that will take and do that. And then when I, OK, so here's, here's my meta stuff. These points, uh, nope. these points, when I want to, I have a command for this um, that will do this automatically, but um, turn project off. But now I can reset my gumball. Oh, that didn't work. I have a command that I just called that does this. Um, and it will, these points have names on them, so I can find the point by name and then automatically set my gumball back to that. So I can turn it on its major axis even after I've got it laid out in space. So that's my meta layer. It, it's just stuff that I never actually see, and it's been so long since I, I wrote my scripts that I don't even remember how they really work anymore. Um, <laughs> but I can... I've got a gem scale. Oh. Yeah, because I think what you're showing is what I find oh, really annoying in Matrix. Are turned off. Once you select the so object that, and then rotate uh, it. Gem scale. So right now it's showing me that it's one millimeter. One. You can in Matrix. So if you use that set object, it will set it. You know, like I was doing things 40, 45 degrees. It knows everything. If you actually click on set object on your gumball. I think it's about the third, the second one maybe, or can, the first one. You can set it up to the object again so you can rotate stuff. Sorry, I think uh, my phone died, and I was tied into that for audio. Uh, it's been running video. I, I missed, like, whenever I stopped talking, I, I haven't been able to hear anything since then. Okay. We're still here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but... Usually, when I, I scale, I, I'm just doing a three-dimensional scale, so I want to make it a 1.8 millimeter stone. And then all of the, the things that went with that stone get scaled with it as well. Um, if I have another one of these guys over here, and let's say I... The importance of these, these three or four dots... Um, if I were to draw a curve from there to there to there and uh, pipe it. So, 
So the blue is really good for, let me just isolate one thing. So green is an edge, uh, black is U, and light blue is V. So when I go to rebuild, I don't have to figure out which is my U direction, V direction. I can just look at the colors and tell which way is which, and then uh, extract surface, don't copy, grab that guy. Red is a naked edge. So I can always see uh, what hasn't been joined up yet. Um, and I can see through um, see through my surfaces. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I really like my uh, little blue color scheme. And then after I get done with all the minor fiddly stuff, I'll switch over to T uh, the T splines. Uh, T.S. Shiny. T.S. Shiny. Yeah. I don't know the names for things because I just got buttons for them. I just click buttons. <laughs> um. Cool. So I think we should call it a day. See, it's 11 o'clock here now. What do you think for that one? Yeah, let's call it. Hopefully next time people will jump in and ask questions and we can run off of uh, what people want to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But well, it's been a good test. It's been good. Thanks. Yeah. Enjoyed it. So. Um, oh, I don't like new, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, we'll have to. We'll sort the next one out and we'll, we'll see what we can do then. Maybe I can do an 11 minute halo. <laughs> <laughs> so. Or a five minute single stone. Yeah, yeah, well, I know I've done that as well, so that was all there for you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, it's been good chatting, chaps, and um, we'll catch you all soon. Nice one, thanks a lot. All right. Bye. Catch you later. Later, cheers.